This is a case of a spiral flap dismembered pyeloplasty for a large proximal ureteral scar. The patient is a 77-year-old female with a history of right flank pain who underwent an evaluation demonstrating hydronephrosis on both renal ultrasound and CT scan and a MAG3 Lasix renogram demonstrating obstruction on the right side. The patient was healthy and elected to proceed with a robotic pyeloplasty. The patient's CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis shows a dilated large right renal pelvis as well as a dilated right proximal ureter. This is also consistent with a right UPJ obstruction. The patient was placed in the modified left lateral decubitus position and access was initially obtained with a varus needle. After insufflation, ports were placed in the right midclavicular line with a 12 millimeter assistant port placed at the umbilicus. Obstruction was identified. No crossing vessel was present, but an internal narrowing was evident. The bedside assistant performed a flexible cystoscopy and advanced a sensor wire up the right ureter for approximately 30 centimeters until resistance was met. The UPJ was dismembered and the ureter was spatulated posteriorly. It became quickly evident that the narrowing was not isolated to just the UPJ, but rather the patient had a long proximal ureteral stricture. Excision of the strictured segment would result in a long defect, so instead the entire stricture was spatulated. An 8 French ureteral catheter was advanced over the wire to calibrate the ureter and ensure no residual stricture was present. The renal pelvis is then spatulated anteriorly. Given the length of the defect that needed to be bridged, the decision is made to perform a spiral flap pyeloplasty utilizing the redundant renal pelvis. A long inverted U-shaped flap is incised from the renal pelvis and rotated inferiorly and partially detubularized. Orovicral suture was used to anastomose the heel of the spatulated ureter to the most caudal portion of the renal pelvis rotational flap. A running anastomosis ensued on both sides of the spatulated ureter, ensuring mucosa to mucosa apposition. Care is taken not to handle the mucosa of the ureter to avoid tissue damage. An 8 French by 26 centimeter double J ureteral stent is advanced over the sensor wire and placed into proper position in the renal pelvis. 
The remainder of the defect is then closed using 4-0 Vicryl suture. At the end of the case, a JP drain is placed and a Foley catheter is left within the bladder. The patient had an uneventful postoperative course and was discharged on postoperative day two. She developed a UTI with ESPL E. coli and was treated with macrobid but ultimately required hospitalization for fever and antibiotics. Her stent was exchanged for two six French double J stents placed side by side within the right ureter. The stents were then removed four weeks later. The patient has been without flank pain, UTI, or fevers since removal of the tandem ureteral stents. Follow-up renal ultrasound revealed only mild hydronephrosis and bilateral ureteral jets were visualized. A follow-up Lasix renogram revealed no obstruction on the right side 11 weeks after surgery. In conclusion, a spiral flap pyeloplasty is an excellent surgical technique for a patient with both a UPJ obstruction and a proximal ureteral stricture.